Good evening. I wrap in with your spider ETF wrap up. And this wrap up is for Tuesday, the 18th of January, 2022. Now I'm going to ask you, please write me and tell me what market you'd like me to cover this week. I'm going to replace very shortly the lead chart that we have, and I'll put a new one in. Now, here's what I'm not willing to do. I don't want to do the double and three times, four times the, uh, the, the ETF values. In other words, you'll give me an ETF. Oh, this is like a futures market. It's got three times the value, four times the value. So it's got more volatility. I don't want to cover those. You give me the main size ones, I'll be happy to do it. Different stocks, I'll be happy to rotate them in and out and so on. I did do today, and it's only up for three days on the website, a new video report on the dollar index. I cover it on the monthly, the weekly, the daily basis, the seasonal basis I cover as well. So you might want to take a good look at that because it's going to impact a lot of different markets. Emerging markets are certainly going to pay attention to it. So that's on our website at www.irapstein.com. I'll talk about it at the very end of this. It's under market research when you go there. Okay. So today's one of these interesting days where you come, you break again in the markets. Now, many of the markets are hitting downside targets being either key moving averages and or sometimes together, their lower Bollinger Bands. I think it's an area where the market is getting ripe where the short sellers, the people that have been driving these markets down in addition to those just plain liquidating, are looking to take some money off the table if they've been playing the short side. When we look at the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, GBTC, still very much in trouble. A new low on this whole move is it's arcing itself down. You could see how the market got into a downtrend. It hasn't backed away from it. It hit the lower Bollinger Band here, bounced away hard in a continued lower high, lower and low pattern, and still dropping. And during all this, if we can come over here, it went and it developed. Let me get you another day there. There we are. Both numbers under 20. You can see them better right through here, so I'll do that. Under 20. Under 20, you're fully embedded until you close over 21. You did it by a fraction there. Now, if you re-embed the next day with both numbers under 20 again, you're back to embedded. It's the only time it can occur. Now that it's done that, now you, that was called a bull trap. Why? You knock out. On this day, the, those that are bearish and you're saying, ah, I've got you. If, if you lose an embedded reading, you often go to the upper Bollinger Band. The only time it, that changes is if the very next day you re-embed, which can always happen. It's what you did. Now you got an outside day down. And the neat part is you're going to have a stop over that. And you're just plowing in, looking for the lower Bollinger Band at this point. And this is what the market is doing. And that's why I'm saying if it hits it tomorrow, I expect big short covering again, then waiting to see if you get another bounce out of it. Any reading over 21, I think the bears will run again. In Apple, you went right back to the lower band. So all the market did is it went to the lower band, rallied back into what I call that line in the sand, and fell right back down into those lows one more time. This market is in a downtrend. It has not broken out to the downside. It is getting oversold into a support zone. That is not a buy signal, but it's certainly reason to be not necessarily getting overly aggressive on the short side. In XLF, okay, so this market came unglued. But when did it come unglued? Again, you have your embedded reading. And if, you, if many of you have taken the course that I have, I know that, that watch this. You lost it this day. You have a 79, under a 79 reading. Game over. Yes, if you go back up the next day, just like you saw happen on a, the other chart, you can have that trap. Did it do it? Nope went right to, this is what I often expect, right to the 18-day average. doesn't have to be the very next day, but it's, generally it's in quick order, not, not slow order. And that's what you've done. Your out of your uptrend, it has to rebuild and figure out what it wants to be now. In Disney, I've been talking that I thought it might fall more. Well, there you are. 
Disney's getting hurt from Omicron and other events that are taking place right now. That makes all the sense in the world. And what about its streaming division and tech stocks? They're under pressure too. So it's the combination that is hitting them at this point in time. But there is light at the end of all this because spring isn't that far away. And I know you're going to say I'm out of my mind. We're looking at a lake snow effect. Right around the lake here, there's Chesterton, Indiana, and all 40 minutes away. They're talking Thursday maybe a foot of snow plus that they're going to get, yet the city of Chicago won't get much. It's that lake effect snow like you get in New York and different areas. So you got to be very careful about that. But we're also in Chicago not going to be over 26, they said, without a wind chill for 10 days now. So we're in the throngs of it. But I swear to you, I'm that optimist. I say, you know, March can be in the 60s and 70s. It's not that far away now. We've made the turn. There's more daylight every day. I think that'll help Disney down the road. In FB, the meta platforms, still, all you do is rally up here and you come back each time to that lower Bollinger Band. Are you not seeing the pattern the market does? This is where I think short covering's gonna happen again. I know one of these times it could just fall out of bed. You know it, I know it, but you can't play for that. You gotta play for what the percentage plays are, and the percentage was to be short in this area, covering each time it's hitting that Bollinger Band, and being out if the market reverses on that. It hasn't done it. The industrial sector. What do you think I'm looking at for tomorrow? Look at the 200-day average, the 100, and the Bollinger Band. I think the pros are going to be looking at that just the way I am and saying, oh, no, you're breaking down, but that should be a good support area. Good support doesn't mean I am saying you're a buyer, but I do realize what the pros are going to look at just the way they're looking at the home builders. The home builders went through on Friday, the 100 day, and they stopped at the Bollinger Band. Now they traveled to my lowest number. Now you know they're under pressure because mortgage rates are going up, and you're going to keep hearing that the 30-year uh, mortgage is going up to highs we haven't seen in two years. That's coming. It doesn't mean it's a runaway on it. We're going to get housing numbers tomorrow. I don't see how they're going to be possibly good. We had a home index today number that stunk. So I expect some pressure on all that. Okay, that's where you're at. And I do think the way that I teach charting, the professionals came out there. When we step to the energy, it's still up and away. Now, you've got to start thinking big terms here. Uh, over the weekend, Abu Dhabi got attacked by the Houthis with, dr with drones again. They hit their storage facility. They hit the airport in Abu Dhabi as well. Okay, now you've also got the Russian situation perking up. The U.S. is meeting with Russia on Friday. But at some point, Russia's already, and they've said this, these meetings are useless. At some point, they're going to walk out of this meeting and say they're just too far apart. And that's when it gets now really dangerous. I think this meeting Friday could break the back of everything. I don't see NATO giving in that Ukraine and other breakaway states from Mother Russia years ago cannot join NATO. I'm not saying they're going to let them in either, but I'm not saying that NATO is going to say, well, you can dictate what it is. They're not going to tell Russia, well, you can take all your forces and bring them to the Ukrainian border, but there can't be NATO forces doing their exercises within the Ukraine. These sides are very far apart. If Russia wants a war, Russia will get a war. They proved it in Crimea. They're willing to take on the world. They're stockpiled. They have the energy. It's the heart of winter, and they are making life hard. They're sending out all the threats. They've reversed the oil flow, actually natural gas flow, that goes to Poland. It's reversed. Now it's taken oil away from Germany and other areas right now, the nat gas. They have deployed more troops in Belarus. They have removed staff, embassy staff, in the Ukraine. They are behind these malware attacks that just hit the Ukraine. You can count on all that. What was the background of Putin again? Oh, KGB, I forgot all about that. This man knows the game so well. He knows how he wants to push, where he wants to push. And the big question is, is he going to go for it? That's what... Everybody says now the big, big price to pay. He was willing to do it in Crimea. Why won't he do it now? That's what bothers me. So the energy sector's at risk. What if they use the invasion as a reason not to deliver energy somewhere? That kicks the oil price up because they're a large producer. I'm just telling you. 
These, these are all in play. That doesn't mean I'm right on my analysis. I didn't go to military school. Lower highs, lower lows in the gold miners. They're still under pressure, but really what they're doing is bouncing around in here. They're not giving you a lot of oomph one way or the other. They seem very well confined in the upper and lower Bollinger Band and just over a two and a half dollar range, not doing much one way or the other. As we step to gold itself, falling into the support. So while the trend is down with today's action, you're still over the 18 day average, which means this, the bias is up. So the sell signal's not active and you're working off and out of an overbought condition. If I just pull this back, you can see these numbers. Let's get back one or two days here if it'll, there it goes. Got a 72 reading, now you lose that reading and you've kept it lost. You're no longer overbought. Any number's under 70 and you're not overbought. So you've worked that off, now what happens? That's the big question in the market. In the miners, backing off a bit here into support at the 18 day average. What I'm looking at is, I think you'll have a hard time getting and staying under the 100 day, the 200 and the Bollinger Band. You can get a, a brief washout in the markets. You know you can come in in the morning at any point and they just keep pushing the button. I was asked a question today, one of my uh, subscribers wrote me and said, Ira, do you count the big break today with Martin Luther King Day having been a closed day yesterday is today is Monday. And I wrote, I don't know, and let me explain why. The electronic markets were open yesterday. So Monday trade did take place. I know what you're saying, and that's why I answered no. I can't answer the question, all right? Electronic markets changed everything. On most holidays, the electronic markets are open. Yes, the, the New York Stock Exchange and the other exchanges, as you know, them were closed, but that's not how it was in the uh, stock index futures and all those other ETFs, they're based on the futures. So part of it's yes, part of it's no, I don't have the right answer. In copper, uh, China has been exporting, you heard me, exporting some copper. China's right at that time now where they don't need a lot of copper and you'll go, why? That's pretty simple. Lunar New Year is right in front of you. Omicron is running into the cities. They have a zero tolerance policy. Zero tolerance means you have it, you gotta stay home. A city gets it, the city stays home. They'd have to give special disposition in some manner to get them out to a factory, then they're breaking their own rule. And now, with the lunar holiday, you're gonna have another week where there's nothing. So copper's vulnerable here. Now what's been helping copper is the second largest mine in Peru has remained closed now for a long time, I think it's a couple of months. And the activists are fighting what is happening and so on. Well, that's good at this time of year, but the simple fact is Russia's got a tax in copper that it's taking off and that might release more copper onto the London Metal Exchange. Be careful up at this value. And I've liked copper, as you know, so I'm giving you the warnings. TLT, a higher high, lower low. If you get down to the Bollinger Band, I expect short covering. Each time you've followed that, you've gotten your bounces away from it. The trend, though, the bias has been down since back here, last year. And it's still that way at this point in time. And last in the euro, I feel great with this call. I had people ask me, what do you do? I said, well, if it gets up to the Bollinger Band, it's probably gonna get the pros coming out of the market. That's what I said. This action, will you get follow through? You'd need another day, right after this, this was Wednesday, up at the top of the range. You didn't get that. I didn't expect that all of a sudden this was gonna happen. I, this I expected, but today's break took me by surprise that you went all the way back to the 18 day average. The right thing to do is come out there and now the market is back down here. As I said, I did a special report. First one I've done this year, and this one's on the dollar index. I think the dollar is pretty important. It will affect stocks. It's going to affect emerging markets. It's a reflection of what interest rates are doing. And everything's looking at this as a world barometer, including the Russia-Ukrainian situation. So I cover for you charts in different types. First, I went to the seasonality charts. What does the market typically do from January through December? Number two, bull years and bad bear years and neutral years. I show you those. 
I think if this is, as traders say, this is a bull year, show you what the market does. And this break you got just recently fits in with that, that uh, that's how you start off and maybe come back or does it? I want you to look at the charts and tell me. Then we're going to cover the monthly charts, the weekly, and the daily all in depth. So it's a full report. It's only up for three days on the website. It's available if you go to www.irapstein.com and go up to the top where it says market research. Click on it. Enjoy the report. I'm I. Rapstein. You have a good day. I will see you all tomorrow.